ooh, ooh. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Voice still raspy. <laughs> Mr. Ogunlana, today is November the 1st, 2017. I am posting these on Dream Think Design. And actually, I know the day that I'm posting these don't coincide with <laughs> Look, I already got the, the, the meeting request um, for this meeting that I have. So what I'll do is I'll be right back at you. So, yes, <clears throat> I am posting these kind of out of sync because I'm kind of ahead of I, I kind of like being ahead of the game in terms of how I'm posting these. I first and foremost, I just want to say my holy smokes, you know, today is D-Day and Contact Butler uh, uh, seems as if they have come through with the said dough that they owe me. We're going to see it's uh, about two. What time is it's about two twenty two p.m. That's the lotto number, by the way. So any, all of my listeners, if you wanted some lotto numbers, two, 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 play that cash three <laughs> and um, headed to this meeting, social media for this filmmaker, uh, social media site for this filmmaker. And um, it seems and I'll have more information once I get off of the meeting with him and um, just until not necessarily about the project. Uh, specifics but just about my thoughts about it and and where I'd like to go with it Um, how I feel I just wanted to kind of put that on there I feel yesterday I did a lot of work like I said I've been working on just letting go um, and forgiveness Um, I've actually my new thing now is expansion so I'm, I'm preparing for new expansion new new things i have many things that i want to get into on this uh dreamcast and first i just want to say i'm so appreciative of my website um want to go ahead and 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 shout out snappa.com that's s-n-a-p-p-a dot com and i think i passed it but i'll turn around um because the what snappa does is Snapper is a website that creates YouTube cards for you. They make it really crazy easy. That's what I'm creating the Dreamcast um, YouTube site, uh, YouTube cards from, as you can see. Um, and it is a site that is very easy to use. They have a few different packages that you can get they let you download so they so they, so you can create a you know a, you can create a profile on snapper for free and then what you can do is you can um download like you can go ahead and set up three different packages or excuse me cards and for each card they, you can set up as many cards as you want, but when you get ready to download it, that's when they get ready to charge you. And so when you just know that your first three downloads are free, but then after that, they, they kind of get you with the um, either the annual subscription, which is about 10, 10 bucks a month. But they charge all at once. So it's about 120 bucks or it's 15 bucks um, a month if you want to do them if you want them to bill you monthly and so it's worth it it really is and so for all of all of my freelancers who are building their own websites who have videos of themselves or maybe doing some kind of auto audio cast like this i recommend snapper um and especially if you're going to be doing like audio casts like daily and um like i am and they make it really really stupid easy um and <laughs> and so yeah so I just wanted to go ahead and shout them out um so what I'm about to go do I'm, I got this quick meeting uh for this um social media site for this filmmaker that I'm about to go into and I'll be right back after these messages <laughs> all right after <clears throat> after uh excuse me after a hop <clears throat> a skip a jump 
I'm back at you. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the world right now. <laughs> Where on earth is Carmen San Diego? I am in. Where is this exactly? I am off of Johnson's Ferry Road. This is like East Cobb. This is, I am <clears throat> currently going to be um, tutoring and teaching uh, young kids. And this is the gig that I had. Um, I think I mentioned it on one of the previous tapes. And um, <clears throat> before I get into this, I know I skipped completely the meeting I just had. Um, you know, and so the meeting went well. Um, I like the idea, the vision, the scope. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> as you can see, I still sound like Fred Sanford. <laughs> um, I probably need to get me one of those throat lozenger guys or something. But anyway, one thing I wanted to say before I um, pause it for a cause is that one thing I was thinking when I, because this took me a whole hour to drive over here, folks. So um, I was coming from Memorial Drive to Johnson's Ferry. It took me an hour and, and a, almost an hour and a half, actually. And so one of the things that I was thinking about as I was driving is the significance of having more than one client. OK, for all of my freelancers out there, you cannot call yourself a freelancer <clears throat> if you only have one client. And so you might be thinking like, what do you, well, Duran, what do you mean? I, you know, I'm just starting. I know it doesn't matter. <clears throat> you need to actually learn how to have more than one client. <clears throat> this is why the sites like Upwork and and others, LinkedIn and even Craigslist serves to uh, provide for you more than one client and here's one of that's one of the secrets and one of the things about it is is even when you have one client or two or maybe three you should never stop interviewing looking for new clients and just all around putting yourself out there there was a book that i read a long time ago that was called 30 days guerrilla marketing um, that you, if you're listening to this, you should read. And that book does <clears throat> gives you a 30-day calendar on ways to market yourself. If you're a freelancer, you're a salesman. So having clear communication skills is another thing. Um, <clears throat> also, <clears throat> one thing I will say is also as a freelancer, you have to be able to see through muddy water to spot dry land. What does that mean? Regardless of whatever situation you might find yourself in, like right now, I sound like Fred Sanford and I am I drove a whole hour on the other side of town and I'm, I still don't really know where this place is and I have about a few minutes to find it, um, you know, but I still will find it and I still will get this gig tonight. <clears throat> Another situation is contact Butler came through, hooray, you know, Congratulations, <laughs> you know, drive the confetti and, you know, <clears throat> one thing I will pat myself on the back for is I never stopped doing the work that was necessary to, first of all, have more clients and to continue doing what I do best, which is finding more clients, interviewing, marketing myself, building my own, you know, site, um, putting up these dream casts, you know, continuing to do the work online and offline um, in order to um, <clears throat> continue, whether they sent the money or not. And so, again, for freelancers who's listening to this and I'm going to, you know, uh, we'll be back after these few messages. But I just wanted to say you need to learn how to have more than one client. And you also need to do what you also need to learn how to do is you need to be able to see through muddy water to spot dry land. So no matter how murky things may seem, no matter how difficult things may get, you still should have the ability to always pull it out. So I'll be right back. Wish me luck. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, what a day. What a day. What a day. Um, so the interview went well. <clears throat> and my voice is about had it for today. <laughs> um, and so... Um, 
it, it was the you know the client. Um, it's a coding. Um, it's a tutoring school called the Code School, um, and the, the owner who I met, see, he's a really good guy, um, and so, um, you know, um, you know, if everything works out, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing some some tutoring. One thing I actually was thinking about how that's going to help me in overall in terms of how I um, how I go about speaking to my clients is I noticed the day before I went on that interview that I had a, another client, um, the, the social media filmmaker. And, um, you know, as I was describing some of the, some of the technology, I saw his eyes glaze over. <laughs> and so teaching children and having uh, accountability in terms of a larger group, a larger organization that specializes in teaching children will help me to um, take take what I know in terms of my expertise and stay, take, you know, basically take a step back and be able to speak about it and, and describe it, not necessarily in a watered down approach, but just in a very easy to consume way to describe it and so I think it's really going to put me on another level when it comes to being able to convey how the technologies that I'm going to utilize for all of my clients will help them so this is this is um, like one of those core secrets so I know right before I right before we went to went to our sponsors (laughs) um I was talking about like some key things that some key secrets that you need to be able to know in terms of being a successful freelancer. And I know one of them was being able to um, or learning how to have more than one client. And then another the other one was being able to see through uh, muddy water to, to spot dry land. And and so, you know, moving on to the other uh, secret key in order to be successful is being able to com- com- communicate in a way that's inviting, that is descriptive and that is also <clears throat> instructive in terms of how you know your your skills and your services as a freelancer will help your clients. So um, if you can take some kind of Toastmasters course or some sort of or like doing what I'm doing is like my Toastmasters, right? So I'm I'm actually tutoring, and you know, and of course, if everything works out, I'll be tutoring children. Um, on code and so what it's going to do for me is it's going to create it's going to put me in a situation to where I'm going to have to have these very complicated problems that we're going to solve that I will be forced to um, break down into consumable chunks that even a child can understand so that's what will put me on the next level and so as 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 we think about like freelancing as we think about how to be the very best freelancer i can be you can be um it is communication and even as i was as talking to the business owner he was talking about how he had been interviewing different people and how basically some people that he was interviewing just they made they knew what they were talking about but they just gave off a weird energy and so body language is a part of being a freelancer like i was saying right before we had right you know earlier uh, in this tape i was kind of talking about <clears throat> being able to be a salesman and how important being a salesman is in terms of freelancing um, it is of the utmost importance. I think it was a book. Um, it was a Kiyosaki book. It was a Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. I have to remember which one it was, but basically he was saying that there are f- like four pillars. I think it was four, four pillars to being successful in terms of um, entrepreneurship in terms of investing just in terms of business and so he said one of the pillars was 
doing what it takes in terms of, you know, making the sales. You know, some, you know, another good friend that I have, you know, they talk about there's no business unless you have a client. And so if you don't have a client, then you don't have a business, <laughs> no matter how much time you sit and you plan and you and you pontificate. It doesn't matter if you don't have a a, a Cl- a co- excuse me, a client. <laughs> if you don't have a client, a customer, then your business is a figment of your imagination, folks. That's right. I'll say it again. If you don't have a client, your business is a figment of your imagination. Now, that figment might be more than, um, you know, a pigment because you might have a lot of paperwork. You might have a lot of, you know, things that you've registered in terms of the state, in terms of who knows, bank accounts. But if you don't have a customer, it's a figment of your imagination. Um, The next pillar is marketing, being able to be, you know, market your skills, market your services. Again, I know I mentioned guerrilla marketing in terms of that book, the 30 day guerrilla marketing book. I highly recommend, you know, I read that book long up, they think uh, maybe like a year and a half ago when I was doing a project at Georgia Pacific downtown, I have, you know, it was a library right across the street. And so what I was doing <clears throat> and I'll jump to that and really quick, you know, let's put a pin in some of the in the pillars because I want to describe like what I did for this uh, client that I had, Georgia Pacific. I used to ride the, the train, the MARTA train to um, their site downtown. And so when I jumped on the MARTA, I would drive to the East Lake Station. And then from the East Lake Station where I am, I will basically read a book all the way to the station that I got off to to go to Georgia Pacific. And then during the lunch hour, what I would do is there was a the gigantic was like one of the largest libraries in Atlanta that has the, the largest selection. I, I was in that library and it was almost like a kid in a candy store. I went in that library and they had so many books. And so during my lunch hour <clears throat> at noon, instead of wasting a lot of money and a lot of time at restaurants, and that's another secret, folks. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a vegan, vegetarian, and so I used to be <laughs> 300 pounds. If you see me today, <clears throat> you know I weigh 160 pounds, and so I lost a person <laughs> in the process of three years. So anyway, what I and what I get for that in savings is, you know, when people are going to gorge themselves at, at during the lunch hour, during the day, I'm typically at a library. I'm typically doing things to market myself. I'm typically doing something constructive and informative in terms of my business. And so that's what I had did. And so I was in there reading. There were books that I had found on body language. Again, if, if you know how you market to yourself is one thing in terms of theory, but I'll just break it down. You communicate in ways that you may not necessarily understand. There's verbal communication and then there's communication with your body. And so if you want to be an effective communicator, it can't just be what the words that are coming out of your mouth. That's one way to communicate. And it can't just be the knowledge that you have in your head. That's another way to, you know, that's a a part of the communication. But the other portions of communication is the energy that you give off in terms of like your body language, how you stand. Do you have good posture? Um, you know, do you do your how do you, do you make good eye contact? You know, how is your body turned in, in relationship to the people that you're talking to? These are all, you know, tips and tricks that, you know, if you read a good book on body language, go to YouTube. There are many different YouTube channels that talk about body language. I'm frequently I'm frequenting rather um, many um <clears throat> YouTube channels. <laughs> it's like my voice is like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm going to push through this this raspiness just to just to convey this point. And so I frequent YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channels that deal with body language. Um, as it relates to and I, and I, it's it's a part of communication, which is a part of marketing. That was the second pillar. The third pillar is accounting. How do how do you keep books? 
you know, this was like one area in the game, so to speak, that I had failed at miserably for years and years and years, keeping books and having a financial system, like a personal finance system. I'm developing that and I'm going to be talking about that, at, you know, um, over time, as my system develops, I'll let you all in in terms of like uh, giving you a sneak peek on on on, you know, technologies that I'm utilizing in order to formalize my personal finance system. I used to use Mint. That was great because I had bank accounts that, you know, and I tied my bank accounts to them. And, I, you know, Mint was cool, but I don't necessarily what I found was is I because I didn't truly understand the significance of having a finance system. Um, <clears throat> I didn't use it correctly. Then I had QuickBooks online. That was cool. But again, it, I didn't understand the significance of of having a finance system. So now I don't have any of those systems. And I've, you know, doing my taxes is something that I've learned over the years is crucial, ladies and gentlemen. And so, you know, I've learned through dealing with various accountants that basically the taxes is done based off of a profit loss statement. And a profit loss statement is really based off of like your, the, the ledger for the year. You know, what you spent and what you made, money coming in and money coming out of the business. And so I'm basically I've I've done some things to start to create my own system out of like Google spreadsheets, you know, and different forms to, to generate reports based off those spreadsheets. And so, I, I, you know, as I as my accounting system develops, I'll, I'll definitely make sure that I keep you all in the loop because I'm going to be listening to this myself. So I definitely need to keep myself in the loop. <laughs> and so, you know, the third thing or excuse me, the fourth pillar is the laws themselves. What's illegal, you know, in in, in your in terms of your industry and your skill set that you're freelancing in? What's illegal? You know, these are the rules to the game, so to speak. And if you don't know those, then you basically getting played, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I, I was getting played. You know, um, I know the tape that I had made before this one kind of dealt with me, you know, being played in terms of like, um, you know, people that I was doing business with. And so um, right now I'm making some quinoa and um, I am going to. Um, you know, what I found is like my recipes that I've been uh, not necessarily recipes, but what I found is, is like I'm slowly building my um, <clears throat> my recipe um, repertoire, so to speak. Um, and so what I'm working on now is like soups. And so right now I have like this lentil soup and this um, with some mixed vegetables in it that I'm using with this quinoa. We'll see how this works out. One moment. I'm basically just taking the broth of the soup and mixing it in with the quinoa. And we'll see how that tastes. We'll let that boil down a little bit, or steam, rather. Um, so, I, you know, I was getting played a whole lot in terms of yeah, when I, you know, on the last tape, that's what I was talking about. And so, you know, that's just because I didn't know the rules to the game as it as it were. And so I got spanked. <laughs> and so if you don't know the rules of how to play the game in terms of like the areas, the industries that you're freelancing in, especially if it's technology, then you are definitely going to get spanked because you're going to be doing things that essentially could be legal and you could get sued and you know, trust me, it's worth just at least doing like a quick, especially if you're creating your own apps and creating your own web, you know, um, websites that do, you know, especially if they're software as a service or if you're doing some kind of IoT thing, you know, just kind of do a brief survey of the laws that, that affect the, the, the app. So anyway, so those are the, the, the main pillars. And so just wanted to say that. Um, today, very busy day. I literally was driving all day. You know, I had two meetings, very, very good meetings. Um, and I just got home. I know at the very start of this tape, I think it was earlier during the day. Um, 
you know, right now I'm looking at the clock and it's 10 20 PM. And so, um, I think I, I started this tape when I was about to do this first meeting and you know, <clears throat> How I feel outside of my voice sounding again like Sanford and Son, uh, like <laughs> Red Fox. Um, you know, I feel good about today. Um, you know, I'm grateful for, uh, you know, my, my the clients that I have. I'm, you know, tonight I am going to pick up the book As a Man Think of by James Allen. And what I'm going to do, there's there's a few habits that I want to try on that I, you know, I'm going to keep myself in the loop. And then for all of the people that listen to this, I, this is, again, a challenge to you. Uh, I, you know, was listening to the book 13 Keys to Success um, in terms of goal setting. And they were saying, if you really want to get some some, you know, some 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 really good work done in terms of the the, day, the days and how like your to do list, then they say prepare your to do list the night before. And so I'm wrapping up to do that. I have some things that I need to do tonight and that it has it's taken some major precedence. And, you know, I'm going to be looking at my list because I, have, I, I still haven't completed my be have do list. And as I was listening to the tape. I think it was two days ago, I realized that I didn't actually describe what be, have, my be, have, and do list is. For all of, for myself include, well, actually for the people that's listening to this, I got that from um, Tim Ferriss' work, 4-Hour Work Week. And I actually remember <laughs> when I read that book the first time, I read that book when I was at Snyder's Lance and I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I think that was about three or four years ago. And that was the first time I re uh, read that book. And that book, changed, it, it, it like rocked my world in terms of like my philosophy, in terms of how I wanted to live my life, in terms of my career. And so if you haven't read that book, I don't know what rock you've been under this whole time, but you need to read the four hour work week. Not necessarily because you want to make your life and, you know, using the philosophy that he creates and, or at least dis explains in that book, but simply because of the ideas that he conveys in that book. They're very... They they're they're good ideas and they push they they cause me to stretch a whole bunch. And so basically I'll describe it and it's from his work. And I think it's actually there's another book that I had saw some something similar to that. Um, but the name is coming up. So I'll mention it's called E-Myth. And that book kind of deals with let me let me look up who wrote E-Myth. E-Myth. That book is written by Michael E. Gerber, and it's E-Myth Revisited, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. And so that's a, that was a good book. And he had a lot of case studies in there um, about like how he because he has a business where he has like basically he consults with small businesses in terms of their planning and organization. And he basically compiled all of his research, all of his clients and put it in the book. And, um, you know, I wanted to just at least put that on the record so that, you know, as, as, as we can move on, you'll, you'll, you'll add that to your repertoire. I want to go back and revisit that book too. Um, but anyway, the be have do list is described as what do you want to be? You know, Kiyosaki and his works talks about it too. You know, what do you want to be? And he actually has a different philosophy on how his like what his approach is. And you'll you'll see when you read Tim Ferriss's work and then when you read Kiyosaki's work, I think it's in Rich Dad Poor Dad, um, you'll see that their philosophy the, the information is the same, but the philosophy is different in terms of how like the practical approach that one author um, advises over the other. But the main point of it all is is uh, the B list is what do you want to be? Like who are you and who 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 are you? Who do you want to be um, in terms of at yourself at 100 percent? 
you know, not who you are today, but if you had an opportunity in terms of like if money wasn't an object, if time wasn't an object, if, you know, if you had every, all of the resources necessary, who would you be? You know, would you be a painter? Would you be a rock star? Would you be, uh, you know, a rocket scientist? Would you be, you know, Mr. Ogunlana? <laughs> no, nah, it's just like, um, you know, but who would you be? And, you know, and then, you know, you know, and basically um, you could do that like the way I, I you know, and I have a list that I c- compiled um, and I can get into that in a second. But I would at least wanted to at least describe that. So that's the B list. The have list is what do you want? Again, if money isn't an object. You know, what it, what would you have? Um, you know, how, what, how many cars would you have? You know, what, you know, what, pos- what material possessions, you know, and I personally say it's material possessions is even a, a state of mind. You know, what would you have? Um, you know, what would you learn, basically, you know, and, and, and what would you physically have? And then what would you do? Right. So if you are a boxer, you know, what would a boxer do? That's one way to look at it. And then another way to look at it is to not to not take on to to disregard your B list and just look at what do you want to do with your life in general? You know, so what I'm and what I'm doing is because I write I've written so many versions of it is I'm starting to see that they are all related to each other. And so let me go to my B have do list. See what I got. Also, for my, this is for my listeners, if you don't have a book that you write your thoughts in, get one. And what I get is I get a book that does not have lines in it. So typically I go to the artist section, like in Walmart, and I look at, you know, like an artist book. You know, basically it's got a good stock, good paper stock. And it does not have lines in it, you know, because I tend to draw my own lines and categorize and organize my book accordingly. Um, So here's my B list. So the first thing on my B list is be an expert programmer, you know, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, SQL. The second thing on my B list is to be a linguist. You know, and be conversant in English, Spanish, (laughs) English. I said that for a reason, too. Spanish, French, Swahili, Yoruba, Haitian, and Mandarin. Um, You know, I also want to be a real estate investor, specifically in apartments and and, uh, storage facilities. Um, And I also want to be a gymnast. Um... And an expert hunter. <laughs> um, and I took that in a different way, you know, in terms of business clients. And then I also put women in there. <laughs> so you can have fun with this, apparently. You know, I got other stuff on there, but I just at least wanted to give you an idea of the B list. And I, you know, um, you know, so and then here's my half list, you know, to have a wall mount for my, my uh, TV. Um to have a CX bike and a CX bike is like a road bike that meets like a mountain bike, you know, and I want one of those, um, you know, also I put on here like to have straight white teeth, you know, because that's a, that's a, that's been a long term goal of mine, you know, in terms of my dental health, um, you know, and I have some other things on here too, um, you know, to, you know, to have tailored clothes and shoes and, Things, things like that. And then I also have like, you know, um, you know, social media things that I want to have. So you can kind of go across the board, you know, and I, I haven't written my do list yet because I, and I want to spend some time on that. And then when I get to my when I finish my do list, then I'm going to make, um, you know, my goals based off of this list, you know, and then I'm going to shape my days around that. And instead of just having just because what I used to do, and I don't know if this is you, you know, the, the, everybody else is listening is 
what I used to do is I used to just make a just a flat to do list. And it wasn't so all of my to do list for each day wasn't related to each other. It were really just like chores. <laughs> and what I used to do is I used to just kind of like do like all of my chores and have them like all together or not necessarily all together. But I would have like this ongoing list, you know, and I used to have because I've, I've been changing my system up over the years. Some people say you want to have, you know, maybe like a small little like one of those sticky pad books almost you know the size of the page is as big as like a sticky notebook or a sticky pad and then you only get to write like maybe like five or six things down some people like just get like a regular three ring kind of a like notebook and then you just kind of do all of your stuff in there some people you know and i've kind of like i said i have i've I'm, i've made it to this book with no lines in it and i like this because then i can draw in this book i can be really creative sometimes i write upside down um, I do, uh, you know, I do some really interesting things in this book. And so, um, so the point that I was trying to make with my to-do list is, is they had no rhyme or reason. And so what I'm learning is, is if I actually want to care about what's on my to-do list is they have to be connected, they have to be interconnected in some way. Like they have to be able to show me over time what I've been doing. And so when I, you know, I would pu pull up one of my old books, pull out one of my old books, look at it, and then just kind of skim through it. I, you know, and I would used to just see some random, some random <laughs> tasks, you know, that I would do like every day. And then, then like, no wonder I used to like, like lose interest in it because I did, there was no real overarching outcome. So like what I've, some people on YouTube kind of talks about instead of having a to-do list, have an outcome list or outcome-based list. And so your outcomes are, should be based. And here's what my spin on that should be. My, your outcomes should be based on your be, have, and do list. And your be, have, do list should be, you know, you should have like, because this is from the four-hour work where he says, right, the three the short-term goals, which is like three months, and then the long-term, which is six months. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. So the point of it all is, is you want to have some and this should go into some system that you can pull up. Like what I'm finding is, is this is cool to have it written down. But what I'm what I'm seeing is, is I need to have I need to run reports on this. I need to. So like if I, you know, if I'm looking at my year, for example, like my last year, I need to see like what my productivity was in order to accomplish, you know, being an expert programmer. You know, I need to be able to pull up my, my productivity and then look at, you know, how how productive I had been and things that I can optimize. And so this is it's on a flat list right now, but I'm actually going to be putting this in a, in a in an electronic system here shortly. I need to you know, that's another part. It's just another step. So the other secret is in terms of like your freelance, like you, your your real job. Isn't your clients. Your real job is optimizing and perfecting your life. That's your real job. And so you have just if you, you know, like I have so many different responsibilities, clients, you know, hopes, dreams, aspirations that I have to get organized. So organization is, is like one of those key components, um, you know, to get organized in order to master my own life to be a, the captain of my own destiny you know and this is kind of coming from like james allen as a man think of because he says again your primary thought is who you are and so you know if you're not if you don't have any way to write down your primary thoughts each day in terms of outcomes then who are you you know who are you really you know, and so think about that, um, you know, and so I'll end it here because I could keep going. But my voice is like, if you don't stop. <laughs> so one more time, I just want to end this off on just being appreciative of this time of this space. Again, today was a great day. You know, um, you know, once again, contact Butler came through in terms of payment. So I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'm really I feel blessed and I'm thankful for, you know, just being being true to myself and my skills and pushing myself out there 
because I'm finding like I'm I'm kind of I asked myself this question today like man I should have been doing this the whole time you know just think if I was doing this kind of freelance world freelancing like this for 15 years man how far I would be you know and so instead of sitting around regretting I'm thankful that I'm I'm at least doing it now you know and so everything leading up from my past was pre- to prepare me for where I am now I'm thankful and I give thanks and so if, if you're like me and you're sitting or you're standing or you're driving and your head's down for for whatever reason I'm gonna do I'm gonna tell you just like my father told me a long time ago when he used to catch me with my head down lift it <laughs> until next time